meets, like a black hole or Dane Cook. But can and Google's mobile platform Android succeed where so many smartphones seem to be stumbling? Let's find out. Having dominated online search, well, Google like is looking to tackle the growing mobile market ruled by the iPhone and Blackberry. Rather than concentrate on a single phone, Google has formed the Open Handset Alliance with companies like T-Mobile, HTC, Samsung, and Motorola. These companies and more will be releasing phones that run Android, Google's mobile operating system, and open source software platform. Android will allow third-party developers unprecedented access to create their own applications for the devices. Yeah. And Google has already set aside 10 million in rewards to spark the developer community. But will Google's brand and Android's open borders allow it to compete with the iPhone juggernaut? And what can we expect from the first Android phones anyways? Hey, for a good time, dial 555 Lou. So essentially they created a, a new network or a new just totally uh, user-friendly interface and then all these companies can create products for it. Let's make sense of it all. Group manager for Google mobile product, Rich Miner is here. Rich, welcome to the loop, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to be here. Uh, do you have this new, this Android phone? Is it on you right now? Is it in a pocket? Is it going to ring during this interview? And can we see it? Could be here. It could be there? I don't, I don't think it's going to ring, though. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, have you made any low-resolution YouTube videos of yourself playing with it, or is that somebody else? Like, <laughs> How does a video like that get out there? Breathing deeply. I mean, like, uh, neither neither Google, yourself, or, or T-Mobile has made an official announcement yet, but it's looking like the, the first Android phone is going to be coming uh, in just a few months. So for those who haven't been following the news on the mobile platform, uh, it, how is Android different than, say, like my iPhone or a BlackBerry? Yeah, it's different in a couple of ways. I think the first thing to realize is that Android isn't a phone. It's not just a single phone like an iPhone or like a BlackBerry. Right. It, Android is an entire platform. So we're building all of the software that one needs to build a, a highly um, integrated, great communicating, great internet experience mobile device. And we're delivering that entire uh, platform as open source to the community. And we're working with a whole bunch of partners so as Eric Schmidt said when we announced Android, this isn't about a single phone, it's about hundreds of phones. Right. Uh, now, and I trust that Google can deliver a powerful experience. I mean, I use your products every single day, to, to say the least. But how can you guarantee that it's going to be that experience if you don't have a minimum spec for the phone? Like, or is, does that exist? Do, does the phone have to have a certain amount of power in order to run Android? Yeah, I mean, so we've been working closely with all of the OEM partners on a reference, set of reference designs. And so we're pretty confident that people understand, That's good, you know, yeah. what are the recommended chips, memory configurations, mm -hmm. et cetera, for a basic Android phone. Over time, uh, they'll we'll bring that phone down market, so you'll go from sort of being a smartphone-like platform down to more feature phones. But initially, it's going to be, uh, you know, clearly targeted as a consumer-centric. Uh, smartphone device. That's going to be a great phone and also give you a great internet experience. And now what is the, uh, the operating system based on? Well, so there's Linux and then, uh, but if you really looked at the, the architecture of the platform, Linux represents a pretty small component. Mm -hmm. On top of Linux we have lots of libraries to give you great multimedia capabilities and codecs and speech recognition and database services. We then have a whole virtual machine architecture that lets you program great list applications in Java. And then unlike uh, traditional mobile phone platforms, which have a very restricted set of mobile Java APIs, we have a very rich and powerful Java programming environment that's also, also multi-process, so that uh, not only is your application running, but your application can be multiple processes or communicating with other parts of the system to give a very integrated experience, and also to let your app or your, or your service run almost as a mashup uh, of what you want to do and other capabilities in the phone, like location and messaging, et cetera. Well, it sounds like there's a, a metric ton going on there. Um, but okay, I, just wonder, yeah, I, I see how it works. The iPhone now, thanks to the latest firmware, has this thing where it, it will, it will kind of hesitate, take its time when I'm typing a message, or just kind of shut off when it feels like it just takes a break. And I'm going <laughs> to slow down. I'm working too much. Um, can we expect <laughs> features like that from, like, this? <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've been putting a lot of time into building what we think is going to be a very robust platform, and we've been working with the chip manufacturers and the handset manufacturers, and so I think you'll find a pretty peppy device that, uh, right. uh, that's going to deliver on your demands. <laughs> and and I, know, uh, I know, Rich, again, uh, the message is that Android is not a phone, it's an operating system, but is there something that can be done software-wise to guarantee that these phones might have better battery life or at least more than three minutes of it if I'm making a phone call on a high-speed network? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, uh, the way to get better battery life is to be smarter with what you're doing with the hardware and what your software is doing with the hardware. 
you want to shut components off as often as you can so that the CPU isn't running if it doesn't need to be, etc. And we've got a great team of people that are working on optimization for, uh, for battery and power consumption. And I know Google's products are on my iPhone. I use the, the, the map service uh, ad nauseum. I use it all the time, and I'm using the, the Google search uh, application as well. Do you guys see this phone uh, or this operating system as a direct competitor to the iPhone, or do you feel like you're making a different breed of device somehow? Yeah, no, I think people who want, um, you know, just like people who want iPods buy I iPods, I think people who want to buy an iPhone are going to go buy that product, and it's a great product. Uh, but, you know, as I said, Apple's going to have a certain market share for their, you know, uh, you know, at the moment, two phones. Android is, is about a, a whole family of phones from Motorola, HTC, LG, Samsung, and all the other OEMs that we're working with. All right, Rich, and finally, uh, very quickly, I know, you, I know you've got one. I'm sure you can't hold it up, and, but can you give us anything that, uh, that hasn't really received much press yet? I mean, we've seen certain applications, we've heard some features, but is there one thing that's going to wow us when you take it out of the box, something that we, we didn't expect from the operating system? Yeah, you know, two things. I think that one of them is, is sort of a little bit passive, but it's that, that smooth integration of all the apps and services. The fact that the phone is multi-process and that you can quickly bounce between sending emails, surfing the web, clicking on a phone number yeah. on the web, bouncing to the phone dialer, getting on the phone call, popping off. That smooth integration of services, I think, frankly, is going to wow people just because it's so intuitive and easy to use. But as one sort of, you know, great app that I love is uh, the Street View application that we have, which if you've seen it on the web, lets you get full 360 degree views of your street or other locations right. or someplace Which you might really be going to. Which really makes sense, yeah. And it's integrated with the compass, so you can actually rotate that, the phone that really around. Works, so. And the first time we gave it to uh, Sergey Brin, one of the, you know, of course, co-founders of Google, he sat in a chair with his phone and started spinning around in his chair uh, looking at the, the map uh, street view spin around with him. All right, Rich, when am I getting my hands on it? Next week, two weeks, three weeks, come on. Well, we said the second half of the year, so, uh, uh, you know, get ready. All right, coming up soon. Rich, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really looking forward to the device. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And we appreciate you keeping us in the loop. Great, thanks. All right, now, if, uh, you know, if I Google WTF, the first result...